Hello, it's Marguerite from Make with Marguerite. Um, I wanted to show you the projects we made in class last Tuesday evening and those we're going to make on Tuesday afternoon. Um, we were using a celebration set called um, Amazing You um, and it's really pretty but I have to admit when you look at it you might uh, not be too excited by it. So I want to show you the projects. So here we've got two cards and um, the colours worked really well. It was Berry Burst, Smoky Slate, um, Basic Grey and Old Olive. And then after making um, the two beautiful cards, we also made a window box. And this is the first time um, I've used my window uh, die. Um, I shouldn't admit quite how long I'd owned it before I got round to doing it. So the, um, the window box thinlet die um, comes with quite a few parts to it, but the main part you need is this one here and you need two of them to make the box and um, so I've got two cut out already here so how it works is let's say that's the top and that's the bottom so they're both the same but you will need to turn one round and that is important to remember if you choose to use any of the other parts so you can make a lacy top um, to your box and there's also a couple of dies um, there's a few other dies at the top, but there's also ones that you can use in the side panels that look very pretty. So I, um, if you notice with this one, it's got a heart in the middle, which you would want to be facing the right way up. So when you come to cut it out, you do need to consider the, the way the box goes together. On one piece, you need to have it facing this way, and then you need to have it effectively upside down. I'm just working this out as I talk to you. Upside down on the other piece. Um, so that it will be facing up. So if you had them both this way, you would cut it that way up on this piece and then that way up on that one. Okay? I'm getting confused as I talk to you. Um, so I hope I hope that made sense. The other thing is to remember when you use the die is the way it cuts is you get side tabs on both pieces. You don't need both of those uh, tabs on both pieces. So on one piece you need to cut off this tab here and this tab here. Um, on the box that um, we made on Tuesday um, we chose to uh, emboss it so I used the um, beautiful flower stamp and my Versamark ink and uh, some silver embossing powder and my heat gun and I embossed it so let me show you one. I'm doing a bit of a blue peter here, one I've already done. And I've also, um, uh, so you can see I've cut off the sides of this piece, no tabs, but there's tabs on that one. And I've used um, my bone folder and I folded on, when you cut the box, it, it makes all the score lines for you, but you do need to reinforce them. And then you need to think about, before you put glue on, that you're going to want to open the lid. So don't put glue on these pieces um, because you won't be able to open it. And also, this is my bottom of my box on these pieces here, okay? Now I've put tear and tape on in advance, um, but actually I'd recommend that you didn't put the glue on until you're forming the box, because the first time you make it, you'll, you'll think, which ones was it I wasn't meant to put glue on? And it's really obvious as you make the box, because you'll think, oh yes, that's the lid or that's the base. And you could also use Tombow, the wet glue, that works really well. Um, because that gives you a little bit of wriggle room but um, I'm not so good with Tombow personally. So I've, as you can see I've taken off my backing tape and I'm now going to form that side so it comes together very easily. So this is the bottom of my box. Now the, the tape is a tiny bit wider than you need so you do need to just tuck in those stray edges. And then you get your other piece, and we're going to uh, form the side first of all. So. There we go. Then I'm going to put the bottom piece in. I hope the um, embossing is showing because um, it's very, very pretty. 
There we go, working our way around. Because you can get carried away when you're um, enjoying putting this together and seal your lid, which is very annoying because it's going to be no use to you then, apart from to look pretty on the side, you won't actually be able to put anything in it. Okay, and so I've got my final one to go here. There we go. Just need to do a little bit of manipulation there so the bottom doesn't come open at the same time. So I'm just going to put it down and press down with those. Okay. So, sorry, my bit of paper's getting in the way. So there we go, the whole box is now formed. And these little tabs help it to shut. So I'm just making sure they're nicely folded. And there's our box. So I think the first time you make it, it is a tiny bit complicated. But I think once you've seen it and put it together yourself, it'll become um, much easier. So the next step is to put um, a beautiful piece of ribbon and I'm using the um, Berry Burst ribbon here. It's, um, I think it's called something like, hmm, it's the Crinkled Seam Binding and um, I think it's a very forgiving ribbon to use, um, very easy to tie, whoops I've got a little twist in it, to tie with um, because it, it has already got these creases but it's a very soft ribbon really. need to do a bit of fiddling here to make it completely beautiful. So things you could put in this box potentially would be clearly a lovely Mother's Day present, what I'm hinting girls. Um, so yes we talked about in class potentially some handmade chocolates or some jewellery or wedding favours or um, any other sort of treat. So to finish it off the final thing was a little tag um, and there is a matching stamp set that goes with this set. Um, it's called Window Shopping. And, and these fit on the on the um, lid panel, very, and that's the side panel. But um, this one here is the one I've chosen. It's Open Me. So I've got it on a little block. And I have um, some basic grey ink. This is my three quarter inch punch. It's quite a snug fit, but I felt it worked really well. Okay. Um, in the uh, dies, there's also a little tag, which I have cut um, from my old olive ink. And so just oops, add some snail onto that. And some baker's twine. The baker's twine sometimes hides in a catalogue. It's uh, in amongst the ribbon. And there's just uh, there's some solid baker's twine and there's these ones with the stripe in it. I have to admit, generally I just use white for everything but I have this one to hand. And we'll add this to our project. Trim this off. Right, there we have it. So, as you can see, it wasn't difficult to form at all, as long as you don't put too much glue on in the wrong places. So, um, I hope that helped showing you how to make it up. Um, if you would like to buy any of the materials, um, you can get them from my online shop, which is marguerite-moran.stampingup.net. Hope to catch you again. Bye-bye.